everything that is me from my big toe to my brain is built with building blocks that entered my body here. Building a house, building blocks come in on a truck. Building a Lego structure, building blocks come in a box. Building a body, building blocks come in like this. For anything to be built, the fundamental building blocks must be delivered to the lot, tabletop, or in the case of living organisms, the individual cell. Since you are watching this, I assume you are a human, which means you are made of 37.2 trillion cells, give or take 73. Every cell in the body is a construction site, and cells build themselves from the inside out. Just like a house or Lego structure, there is a precise set of plans, and the building blocks are used according to those plans. The finished product usually looks like the original plan. That is if, and a really big if, all of the building blocks specified in the plans were delivered to the construction site. Every cell has a specific function, and those functions keep you alive and healthy. Brain cells think, heart cells beat. There are a lot of different types of cells and equally as many functions occurring every second of every day. For those functions to occur, building blocks have to make their way to individual cells. To get building blocks to cells, your gastrointestinal system has to break down your food into its component parts, digestion. Once your food is broken down into fundamental building blocks, the circulatory system takes them to the construction sites. Nutrients can be categorized as either macro or micronutrients. Macro large, micro small. When you are building a house, you need a lot of lumber and cinder blocks. When you are building a Lego structure, you need a lot of, well, Legos! When you are building a living organism, you need a lot of protein, fat, and carbohydrate. Compared to the volume of lumber needed to build a house, you need a much smaller volume of nails and screws. Similarly, we need a relatively small amount of vitamins and minerals. To build a house, you need manpower or woman power. You need energy for each cell to function, and part of that cell's functionality is building itself from the inside out. For cells to perform their specified function, energy must be utilized. Want to use a circular saw to cut a board? You need an energy source. Use the saw to cut a board, it radiates heat. It's not just friction, it's expended energy. Want to use a brain cell to think? You will need energy. When that brain cell does its thing, it radiates heat. Your 37.2 trillion cells are doing so much work right now, your body is radiating heat such that your body temperature is about 98.6. By the way, a calorie is nothing more than a unit of measure that indicates the amount of heat energy in your food, the amount of heat energy stored in your body, or the actual amount of heat energy being radiated from your body. Stored heat energy goes in here, and when it is used, it radiates away. We primarily get the energy for all this physiological work from carbohydrates. Yeah, we get some from fat and protein, but most of the energy for cellular metabolism comes from carbohydrates. Some carbohydrates can be digested quickly, Others take a long time. Some don't even get digested at all. We know this because they come out looking very similar to how they went in. For those carbohydrates from which we can obtain energy, they fall on a digestibility spectrum. The ones over here are simple carbohydrates because it is easy for our gastrointestinal system to get energy out of those foods. For those over there, the process is difficult. Intuition might tell you, Easy is better, but I assure you, we do not need to make it any easier to get energy out of our food and into our bodies. Not to mention we get most of our vitamins and minerals out of the complex carbohydrates. Fat is a macronutrient, and we do need a relatively large amount in our diet. Emphasis on relatively. All fat is not the same, and fats, plural, fall on a spectrum. Over here, we have saturated fat. And over there, we have unsaturated fat. Every dietary fat you ingest will be a mix of saturated and unsaturated fat. Animal fats have a tendency to be much more saturated. Solid, plant fats have a tendency to be much more unsaturated. Liquid fat is a building block, and it is used in the membrane of every cell in your body. Fat is also necessary to cushion your organs. 
transport certain vitamins and even forms much of your brain. What's up, fathead? Cautionary note, saturated fat can clog up your arteries, leading to risk for heart attack and stroke. Dietary protein though, now we're talking. It serves as the primary building block. Regardless of the living organism, protein forms much of its structure. Except for in beetles, they got a whole different physiology going on. Most of me and you is built with amino acids that are obtained from dietary proteins. There is a total of 20 amino acids and cells use them as building blocks. 11 of the amino acids can be made within human cells. However, nine of them must be obtained from dietary sources. Thus, if a dietary protein source has all nine, we call that food a complete or whole protein. Cells use the 20 amino acids to build hundreds of thousands, if not millions upon millions of cell structures. We call those cell structures proteins. A healthy diet will include all the macro and micronutrients and can most easily be achieved by eating whole foods. If a food comes in a bag, box, or wrapper, it has been processed, which serves to reduce its nutrient value. Eating a diet rich in whole foods makes it significantly difficult to eat too many calories. By the way, most juices and certainly sodas are highly processed and contain lots of easily digestible energy. Calories, staying hydrated is important. Just do it with water. To review, we learned that everything that is us is made of fundamental building blocks called nutrients. The gastrointestinal system is responsible for garnering nutrients from our food and the circulatory system delivers them to individual cells. Food can be categorized into micro and macro nutrients. Micronutrients being vitamins and minerals and the macronutrients being carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Some carbohydrates are really simple to digest, meaning we can get a lot of calories from them in a very short period of time. Others, not so much. A calorie is nothing more than a measurement of heat energy, regardless of whether that heat energy is inside of a food waiting to be utilized or if that heat energy is radiating from your body. We get most of our energy from carbohydrate, but we also get energy from fat and protein. Dietary fat contains both saturated and unsaturated fats. Animal fat has a tendency to be mostly saturated or solid, and plant fat has a tendency to be mostly unsaturated or liquid. Animal fats can be dangerous. Dietary proteins contain the amino acids which our bodies use to build proteins. And if you get eaten by a Yeti, you would be considered a dietary protein. Lastly, to obtain an adequate proportion of macronutrients and micronutrients and calories, it is best to stay away from the bags, boxes, and wrappers and eat a diet rich in whole foods.